You probably know the speaker who starts by saying, before I talk, let me say a few words. I was recently told that this opening line, like everything else, comes from Yiddish. So be it. Before talk, I would like to say a few words about George Mosse. In the context of our series of lectures topic, Europe in the Eyes of the Others. The George Mosse I knew in Jerusalem was an anthropologist on top of being an historian. As an anthropologist, he was deeply interested in a bizarre tribe called the Yekes. The Yekes are German Jews, and by extension, German-speaking Jews from Central Europe who viewed themselves as being in the orbit of the German cultural circle. Needless to say that for some incurable echt Yekes, these Central Europeans, parvenus, were nothing but pretentious imitators. But when Mose arrived in Jerusalem, he was accepted as the prodigal son. He wasn't just a scion of an illustri the illustrious Mose family, but someone who was embraced by the high priest of the Yekes, Gershom Sholem, the most revered scholar of Jewish studies. Mose was an engaged ironist. His attitude to the Yekes was ironical, yet without an alienating ironic distance. He regarded the Yekes of Jerusalem as the last people that still upheld a religion called by Humboldt Bildung. Its creed is a face in the perfectibility of men by means of an all-rounded humanistic liberal edification. Believe, Mosse believed that Bildung was once the civil religion of the bourgeois Jewry in Germany and that it was still being practiced in Rechavia, the dwelling of the lost tribe of the Yekes in Jerusalem. I had a peculiar role in Mosse's scheme of figuring out the Yekes. My late wife, Edna, who was born in Jerusalem, was raised in a Yeke family that lived just under Sholem's apartment in Abarbanelstrasse 28. The father, Theodor Ullmann from Würzburg, was a professor of nephrology. The mother, Lisa, a classicist, was born in Vienna, and at the age of 78, she started translating from Greek Josephus' history of the Jewish wars against the Romans into Hebrew. She finished at the age of 88. The book became an instant bestseller in Israel. The Ullmans were pious building worshippers. High culture for them was beyond the pleasure principle. It was dinst. My parents were the others, Ostjuden, who originated from Poland. And if it is true that every marriage is a mixed marriage, ours was too. Mose used to visit my in-laws before his weekly pilgrimage to the Sholems on the second floor. Then and there, I was relentlessly and humorlessly interrogated by him. George tried to extract from me the other side of the story, namely how the Yekes were viewed by my people Meine Leute. Although I was a Sabre, still they were my people. This was a topic of deep fascination for Mose, and I was his native informant. What sort of information did I convey? I'm afraid a very stereotypical one. My lot were ambivalent towards the Yekes. They respected them for their high learning, their competence and efficiency, and yet regarded them as pedantic, psychologically obtuse, the high culture notwithstanding, they stood in the eyes of the Ostjuden for higher idiocy, intelligent but humanly stupid. Whereas we stood for thick humanity, self-deprecating humor, touchingly chaotic life, 
with big and sensitive souls and uncanny understanding of human suffering. They, the Yekes, are machine-like, lacking in inner soul. They believe that problems can be solved. We know that they cannot, and so it goes. From this experience, I learned that East and West are moving targets. What my lot were thinking about the Yekes is similar to what Eastern Jews from Islamic countries think about us Ashkenazi Jews, descendants of European Jews. And this is more or less what Palestinian Arabs think about us Israeli Jews. Orientalism and Occidentalism go hand in hand. What makes Orientalism, the view of the East, more pernicious than Occidentalism is not the nastiness of the stereotype, but the asymmetry in power beyond these two stereotypes, and hence the capacity to add injury to insult. <laughs>